Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at third party libraries. So what's a third party library? Well, it's a library written by somebody else. As we know, when we get it, Python, when we download it and install it, it comes with what's called the standard library. So it's all the features that um, Guido von Russum, the creator of Python, approves of and all of the additional upgrades. Now, other people will write objects and um, some, sometimes we, we want to use them. So that's what a third party library is. A library that's not inherent to the Python standard library, but it's out, it's out there and available for us. So exactly as I said, Python comes with a lot of stuff. So if I want to add a new feature that isn't in the standard library, and God, as soon as you start programming, you find there's so many features that you wish were there. We have two options if th there's a new feature we want either write the package yourself, which is very boring and takes a while, or use somebody else's code, which is great. Using other people's code is called software reuse. It's something we believe in a lot as computer scientists. It's a very important thing to do because the more we reuse other people's codes, the more we check that it's working. If we find there's an error in it, then we let them know that, and then they fix their code, and then lots of people can use really well-tested code. Whereas if we test, write our own code and test it, it might work all the time, but it might not. But it is a fact that the more people who use a piece of code, the more likely it is to work well in all circumstances. So we like the idea of using other people's code. And indeed, object reuse is one of the fundamental principles of object-oriented programming. So in terms of Python, Python has a library called the Python Package Index, PYPI, PyPy. And if we go to pypy.python.org, then we find all of the software packages that other developers have developed and submitted to python.org. And python.org has reviewed them and thinks that these objects are good enough to be part of the extended standard library, we'll say. So they weren't developed by the core Python team, but they're developers like you and me who write code and then think, well, this is a really handy function. Let's say we developed a function to calculate the theorem of Pythagoras, and we didn't see that there was any of one of them in the PyPy Python library, then it'd be nice just to upload it so other people would have access to that. So what does it look like? It looks like, it looks like a wiki page, kind of. So you, there's a search bar up in the top right-hand corner. You search for whatever term you're looking for, and then you, you, you look for whatever package you want. And typically, all of the, all of the uh, classes are well documented, so that they all use doc strings and have additional descriptive features. So then you find out what you need. Sometimes you find a, a, a package or method that is almost what you want, but not quite. And then you have to make the trade-off. Do you change the program that feeds in the information so, you, so you, it takes in the parameters correctly, or do you write a version of it yourself? And these are trade-offs in a work environment that are to do with cost and time, really, and things like that. Once you find a package that you want to install, there's a tool called pip, P-I-P, it's the Python installation tool, to install it. Pip typically doesn't come with Python when you download it, but you can in get it from pypy.python.org slash pypy slash pip. You can get it from there, and the pip is the installation tool that allows you to install packages. The same way if I'm adding a new DLL or a new font into um, Windows, if I need to install a new device driver, I download it, I run it, I have to do a bit of fiddling to install it. If I want to add a new Python library into my existing Python installation, I need this tool called pip that'll take the library that I want and fit it into the Python standard library that I have installed on my computer. And we simply use the command at the Python prompt as pip install and the name of the package we've downloaded, and that'll do it for us. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.